Hello and welcome to this special edition of Movie Time on BTB 106.6 FM, devoted mainly to the forthcoming 19th Bradford International Film Festival. Just flipping through the 232 pages of the free official programme reveals a wealth of filmic wonders. Over 160 films and special events, including free kids shows on the big screen in Centenary Square. I spoke to the co-directors of the festival, Tom Vincent and Neil Young, about their picks from the Embarade de Richesse on view. What are the highlights of this, uh, this uh, festival? Uh, the highlights, there's, um, there's a, a 13 film strand on Indian cinema, which um, takes in, with the exception of the 30s and the 2000s, every decade of the first century of Indian cinema. Uh, it's a very diverse strand and includes lots of different modes and styles of Indian film. Uh, we've got to Sir Tom Courtney will receive the Lifetime Achievement Award of the festival. He'll be here on Saturday 13th of March. He'll be here to give um, a career-spanning interview. Uh, we've got 56 previews and premieres. We've got well, 56 premieres that are either UK premieres, world premieres, European premieres or international premieres. But when you really come down to it, the, you ask what are the highlights, it, it depends who you are. And um, I would say to anyone who wants advice on how to sample the festival, don't come and see one film, come and see three. And if you go to the website, you can see recommendations. If you like this, try this. So if you, if you browse through, pick out one film that you like, go to the website, there'll be two suggestions of other films that you might try and like to see. Go and see those three. I think if you go only go and see one film at a film festival, you may have been to the festival, but you haven't had the full festival experience until you've seen, I think, three. Tell me about the opening film. The opening film is called The Look of Love. It's a new film with Michael Winterbottom, stars, stars uh, Paul Coogan, Anna Friel, Imogen Poots, uh, Tamsin Egerton. Uh, it's a biopic about Paul Raymond, who was the uh, Soho nude theatre owner and pornography publisher, um, very famous in the 1960s and 70s. Um, Raymond's Review Bar. Raymond's Review Bar, yes. Um, when he died in 2008, he was apparently the world's richest man, uh, sorry, the UK's richest man, a uh, fortune of, uh, I think, 800 and something million pounds. It's, so it's, it's, uh, it's a story that is quite sort of uh, buoyant and celebratory, but takes on a, a more poignant tone. Um, it's, it's actually about the relationship between him and the, the, the women in his life. Steve Coogan plays Paul Raymond, yeah. And the end for the, the reluctant fundamentalist? Is an adaptation of Mohsin Hamid's uh, 2010 novel by the same name. Stars Riz Ahmed, uh, Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, it's about a ambitious Pakistani young man's journey from his home in rural Pakistan to New York where he becomes a very successful Wall Street trader and his disillusionment. Uh, the film is bookended by a terrorist in incident that's occurred in Lahore and by an interview with an American journalist. Um, it's, a, it's a very tense political thriller that manages to combine personal journey of, of Riz Ahmed's character with global political tensions. And which of all the films are you most proud of? having achieved? Oh, it's tricky to answer. Um, for now, I will say Kalpana, uh, which is an Indian film directed by Uday Shankar, who, is, uh, who was Ravi Shankar's brother. Um, it's, a, it's a great film that has been languishing uh, in a very poor state in Indian film archives for decades. It was... Um, rediscovered, restored and brought back into the public attention by Martin Scorsese and his World Cinema Foundation. The restored version had its premiere at the Cannes Film Festival last year and this, our screening of Kalpana in the Happy Birthday Indian Cinema Strand will be uh, the film's UK premiere. It's a very lyrical film. It's it's about dance and it expresses dance through film. There are lots of very, very expressive music sequences, but it's not a Bollywood film. It's, it's sort of a combination between what we think of as Bollywood and um, more of a, almost an abstract art film tradition. 
it's very beautiful, very luminous, and um, I'm really excited to see what people think about it. Neil Young is the festival's co-director. Neil, can you explain the uh, breakdown of responsibility? Um, well, we're co-directors. Yes. Uh, Tom's here in the museum five days a week, 52 weeks a year. I'm based out of the museum. I live in Sunderland. Oh, really? Um, so I'm more of the kind of roving uh, festival ambassador, shall we say. I go to a lot of film festivals in Europe through the year, normally about 15, 18. Last year I did 18. The year before was 19. Uh, so I'm kind of out there seeing which films are out there, tr trying to get those films, speak to the filmmakers. Tom goes to a few film festivals himself. He was with me in Vienna in October last year. Uh, but he's, let's say, he's, he's, he's based on the premises here, so in, in a way he's kind of dealing with all the, the other people in the museum that helped to put the film festival together. Yeah. And I kind of come and go. I'm usually here about once a month. Nice. Um, so I kind of touch base, and, but obviously I'm in touch with everybody on email and text messages and all that sort of thing and telephone calls. Uh, but as I say, I'm kind of more out in the field, shall we say, I and Tom's, Tom's more, uh, more, more in-house. So what are the things you want to draw to my attention about this festival, or to my viewers' attention? Uh, what's the most important things as far as you can see? The most important things, well, I've got to say I do think that Alexei Balabanov is one of the world's leading film directors, and the fact that he isn't as well known as he should be among um, certainly in Britain, is something that I've tried to rectify a little bit by having three of his most recent films. Tell us about him. He is um, a unique kind of oddball figure that combine his, his films combine comedy, uh, crime, drama, he's done war films, with a very, very dark sense of humour, which is in a way kind of classically Russian, um, and is so dark and so uncompromising that, that he isn't... Uh, in some ways an easy figure to assess because you watch his films and they're, and they're these strange mixtures and for some people they, they, they can't quite get a handle on it. Um, but I think once you get onto his wavelength and once you watch several of his films, he has a vision of the world which he is able to express through cinema and that's really what a great director should be able to do. Um, and that brings us on to the Austrian filmmakers in the Six Pack section, which is uh, in Vienna there's this group called Six Pack Film, which is effectively a distribution network for short and longer filmmakers. And, and this kind of speaks to the way that Austrian cinema supports the avant-garde in a way that other types of other areas of filmmaking in the world, avant-garde is some marginal thing, whereas in, in Austria, obviously you have Michael Haneke, you have Ulrich Seidel and other big directors, but there's this huge group of terrific filmmakers, like pe people like Peter, Peter Kabelka, uh, Peter Tchaikovsky, Mara Matushka, Valley Export, who've been able to have whole careers uh, making these experimental films for 40 and 50 years. And in conjunction with Six Pack Film, we're going to have um, a focus on the entire history of this kind of Austrian avant-garde movement. So personally, I think it's, it's, a, it's a pleasure and an honor to be able to put things like this on the big screen, um, which is where they should be seen. Um, and then, of course, we have Sir Tom Courtney, Yorkshire's yeah. finest from Hull who's going to be here to get a Lifetime Achievement Award, and we've got um, a screening of his one of his personal favourite films, which is One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, getting back to Russia again. But you're also showing uh, Billy Lyre. We're showing Billy Lyre. It's, it's the 50th uh, anniversary of Billy Lyre, which was, which was shown here. Tom is, is just at the minute confirming his schedule, and we're, uh, we are hoping he's going to be here for the Billy Lyre screening, but he's definitely going to be here for the Ivan Denisovich screening, which he, re which he requested. I think that's partly because the film's director, Kaspar Vreda, I think you say it, Finnish born, was actually the person that spotted Tom at RADA and gave him his first break in TV, then his first film. So that was one that Tom said, if you can get that film, that would be terrific. So we were very happy to get that for him. So one day in the life of Ivan Denisovich with Sir Tom Courtney getting this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. And what else? Would you recommend? Well, my personal, um, it's, it, we can't have favourite sections, but Uncharted States of America is one section which I program entirely um, on my own, really. Yeah. And uh, that's one where I, I kind of, there's a certain type of American independent cinema which I think is often overlooked because we have indie cinema and we have mainstream Hollywood cinema. So Uncharted States, since 2007 was the first one, has tried to bring these directors like James Benning and um, Mike Ott and uh, David Fenster, David Nordstrom, making films for very little money. I mean, they, their budgets are in the tens of thousands, not even in the millions. Um, and these are terrific directors, some of them very young, some of them very kind of unknown even within the States.